What's going on guys, welcome to the video. We had the first Prime Minister's questions today, which normally would be taken up with questions from the Corbinated Chicken about Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. But given what has happened over the weekend with the US drone strike on Iran's general in Iraq and the Iranian response last night, that was a little show for their supporters in Iran since the attack was clearly designed not to kill any US soldiers because I'm guessing they know the shitstorm that would swift follow it. It was simply an attempt to save some face since they know their place in the world and that's not standing toe to toe with the god emperor Donald Trump or the USA, that is for sure. The questions from Jeremy Corbyn today was exclusively about that situation over there but in a shock to absolutely no one, Iran's man in the UK, Jeremy Corbyn, refused to condemn the dead terrorist general or the pathetic missile strike made by Iran last night. Instead, he essentially defended Iran's position and condemned the Americans like the Supreme Leader was standing there in person instructing Corbyn on what to say. Maybe we all miss the puppet strings from Iran controlling the Corbynated chicken. Anyway, we are going to take a look at some clips from Corbyn's questions, because while it shocks no one, it is still an incredible thing to witness from a so-called British politician, to the point even his own benches did not appear to support what he said, as I'm sure you will see for yourself in a moment. So let's check it out. And I joined the Prime Minister also in thoughts going to the friends and family of those who died sadly in the Ukrainian plane that crashed in Tehran last night. Mr. Speaker, following last night's attack on the United States bases in Iraq, can the Prime Minister confirm that he opposes any further retaliation or escalation in violence in a situation where the region is in real risk of going into a full-scale war? Now I cut out the first bit of his monologue as it was unrelated to this. He was paying respects to a former Labour MP. He first mentions Iran in relation to the Ukrainian plane that either crashed or was shot down in Tehran sometime around or after the Iranian missiles were launched. No one knows for sure yet, but Iran are reportedly withholding the black box flight recorders, so it doesn't look good for them not being involved in some way. But like I said, we really don't know. Anyway, after that, he exclusively talks about Iran and US tensions, as well as completely missing the first of many chances for him to condemn the Iranian regime for launching missiles into another sovereign nation's territory, and in the general direction of an airbase that contains soldiers not only from Iraq's military, but Western militaries, including the United States. Instead, he sits there demanding Boris Johnson opposes the Americans or Iraqi army, for that matter, responding to the missile strikes. Which luckily for Iran's man in the UK is not likely to happen, since Iran, by the looks of it, deliberately missed their missile strike to avoid getting obliterated by the god emperor Donald Trump and the US military. Since him drone striking General Cordite fried salami or whatever the fuck Corbyn's mate was called showed them all Trump ain't playing games with these pussies. He has a drone for each of them ready to go, I'm sure with their own Hellfire missile or whatever one they sent at him ready to go. I guess Trump's not just shit talking on Twitter after all when he gives these tin pot world leaders a written bitch slap on there. You will notice that not one of his MPs said here at the end of his little tirade there. I guess even them losers know this is a position they should not follow. Let's move on though. Bonson, the House will have noted the, the E3 uh, declaration that was issued by uh, France, Germany and the United Kingdom in which we drew particular attention to the baleful role played in the region for a very long time. Uh, by Qasem uh, Soleimani, and that was a collective uh, European view, but a view that doesn't ap yet appear to be shared uh, by the right honourable gentleman. I've been interested in all his commentary uh, that he hasn't yet raised that matter. Right, so I only included that part of Boris Johnson's response to Iran's man in the UK because he absolutely shit on the fact Corbyn still has not condemned the Iranian terrorists the Americans shit on from a great height last week. Even though you heard Boris pull him up on it there, he still won't condemn anything Iran does, as you will see in every clip we have to look at today. So let's carry on. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn. Speaker, following the government's support to the United States over the assassination of General Soleimani, is the Prime Minister confident that United Kingdom troops and civilians are not at further risk in the region and beyond? 
Well, there was the second chance to condemn Iran's terrorist general and their actions last night, regarding their face-saving missile display. And yet again, he does not. Instead, talking down about the US while insinuating that UK troops are now in danger, when I'm sure you will all agree the biggest danger to UK troops was averted on December 12th, when Iran's man in the UK was resoundingly defeated by the British electorate, along with the shit weasels who follow him giving Boris Johnson an 80-seat majority in Parliament. I would say Boris Johnson and the country are confident the UK's armed forces are safe from Jeremy Corbyn, which is about as good as we can hope for, given nothing is ever safe in this world. But you can tell how salty Corbyn is that Boris backs Trump and the USA. I think he was hoping Boris Johnson would condemn it so he can scream about Orange Man Bad to play up to his paymasters and of course the momentum lunatics that follow him. This tosspot really makes me sick. But let's move on, maybe it will be third time lucky and Corbyn will condemn Iran's actions, or at least the general, who I must admit was largely unknown to most of the world before Friday. But suddenly he blew up overnight to be known worldwide by Saturday, which is quite an incredible feat, I must say. Jeremy Corbyn. The government has said that it's sympathetic to the assassination of General Soleimani, what evidence has the Prime Minister got to suggest that this attack on him and his death was not an illegal act by the United States? Well, you heard the collective groans from inside the House during that one. And once again, no condemnation of Iran or his char-grilled friend, the General, instead claiming the USA broke international law by defending themselves. It makes me wonder who briefed the Corbinated Chicken before coming out here. I mean, his own team on the benches behind him don't seem to be agreeing with him that much. He stands as a lonely figure beating the drum for Iran. I don't know, maybe he's angling for a cushy Iranian TV job. Now his political career is right in the shitter, along with his outdated ideology. Because I can tell you something, he certainly isn't appealing to the British voter here. Not that he stands much chance of doing that, regardless of what he says. But let's hear Boris shit on his claims around the USA wiping out the general. Uh, the strict issue of legality is not for the UK to determine, since it was not our operation. But I think that uh, most reasonable people would accept that the United States has a right to protect its bases and its, and its personnel. And I would remind the House that the individual concerned, Qasem Soleimani, was not only, is, was not only responsible for many years, uh, amongst other things, arming the Houthis with missiles with which they uh, attacked innocent civilians, arming Hezbollah with missiles which, again, they used to attack innocent civilians, sustaining the Assad regime in Syria, one of the most brutal and barbaric regimes in the world, and, of course, supplying uh, improvised explosive devices to terrorists who, are, I'm afraid, killed and maimed British troops. That man had the blood of British troops on his hands. Corbyn. So Boris Johnson spelled out to Corbyn all the perfectly valid reasons why the US was right to do what they did. Any normal person upon hearing that would condemn this general and the regime who instructed him to commit these acts. But not the Corbynated chicken, as you will see now. Mr Speaker, if we stand by international law, as I'm sure the government does and would want to, then surely killing somebody in a foreign territory is an illegal act and should be condemned as such. If we believe in international law, that should be the solution to the problems in the world. And as a permanent, and as a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, can the... As a permanent member of the UN Security Council, could the government say what representations have been made to ensure that uh, the Iranian officials that want to attend the Security Council in order to try to bring about a resolution to the very dangerous situation in the region will be allowed to attend, and in the event of the US administration blocking them, what representations will he personally make to President Trump to make sure the UN can operate in the way that it should and must be able to operate? Right, so still not condemning the Iranians or the general there. Lost count of how many chances he has had now, but the irony of him claiming killing people in a foreign land isn't an illegal act and should be condemned as such is incredible. 
considering not only his support for many terrorist organisations that do exactly that, but as I have said myself many times in this video, he has refused to condemn a man that has likely killed many thousands in foreign lands and more in his own soil. I guess international law and condemnation only matter when it's Orange Man Bad who did the killing, or if it involves the USA, UK or West in general when it comes to Iran's man in the UK here. It really goes to show where Jeremy Corbyn's loyalties lie in my opinion opinion and should mean he is removed as an MP instantly. How is this even allowed to continue? To have the Queen's opposition do it is truly incredible and an utter embarrassment to this nation, especially when he finishes up demanding information on Iranian officials being allowed to attend the UN Security Council. Just wow is all I can say to that. But let's move on. Obviously, he's not finished there. Jeremy Cobb. Iraqi parliament passed a resolution calling for foreign troops to leave their country. Can the Prime Minister confirm that the British government will respect any decision made by a sovereign parliament and government in Iraq that may make such a request in the future and will respect, and will respect the sovereignty of Iraq as a nation? So, shock horror, here he is again, still not condemning Iran, but instead pushing the Iranian line in the Iraqi parliament that wanted the American military expelled from the country. I really don't know how no one in the Labour Party told him this mantra in the Houses of Parliament on live TV is worse than any car crash interview before it. It should be such a PR nightmare that surely someone in the Labour Party knew it wasn't going to be a good idea unless he hid it from everyone until now. But either way, he is dragging the whole party down with him in what looks like a scorched earth policy. I fucking love it. I have to say, I'm glad he's staying on until April. But let's move on to the next clip. My question was if the government would respect the sovereignty of Iraq, its parliament and its government, and the Prime Minister did not answer that question. The United States' actions have undoubtedly escalated the risk of a dangerous conflict and in an already destabilised region, putting civilians, UK troops and nationals at risk and leaving the Iran nuclear deal in danger of being dead in the water. This government's response is not putting the interests of this country first, but instead seems more interested in prioritising the Prime Minister's relationship with President Trump over the security of the region and of this country. Isn't the truth, isn't the truth, Mr Speaker, that this Prime Minister is unable to stand up to President Trump because he's hitched his wagon to a trade deal with the United States and that prioritises everything else that he ought to be considering. Well, surprise, surprise, he is still pushing the Iran line without once condemning them. Instead, condemning the Americans like he is reading a script on Iranian TV. It takes a special kind of cunt to sit there doing that in the British Parliament. And it seems Jeremy Corbyn is that special cunt. It is truly hilarious when he claims the government is not putting this country first, when he stood there for like nine minutes shitting on the West while he defends the Iranian regime and anyone who hates the UK or United States. I'm not sure in what world that is putting the country first. Maybe it's the same one that thinks Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party won the argument at the election last month. It's incredible, but to finish off, let's hear Boris Johnson shit on Iran's man in the UK to end the back and forth between them, which I cut out most of what Boris said, because he's just responding to the nonsense that I have just responded to. And I'm sure most of you watched Prime Minister's questions earlier, or replays of it by now. Uh, well, well, Mr Speaker, I was kind of waiting for the little green men thing yeah. to come out at the end about, about the, uh, the, the trade deal. Uh, this is absolute fiction. Uh, but uh, what I will say is that the UK will continue to work for de-escalation. Uh, in the region. I think we're having a great deal of success in bringing together a European response and in uh, bridging that, uh, the European response with that, of course, of our American friends and working both with the Iranians and uh, with the Iraqis to dial this thing down. But he should be in absolutely no doubt. And uh, this is, uh, of course, a leader of the opposition who has famously received £10,000 uh, from Iranian press TV. Uh, he should be... He should be he should be in absolutely no doubt that we are determined to guarantee with all the, everything that we can the safety and security of the people of Iraq, uh, whereas he, of course, would disband NATO. And it is this government that will continue to stick up, stick up for the people across the Middle East 
who have suffered, who have suffered at the hands of Qasem Soleimani and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, God's force that he has led and whose terrorism uh, he has promoted. And I am very surprised at the end of these exchanges that he has yet to condemn the activities of Qasem Soleimani. Well, Boris Johnson has just roasted the carbonated chicken on an open fire, pointing out on UK television he was paid 10k by Iranian state TV is the ultimate slapdown Boris can put out there. It's something people will hear and take notice of. So well done Boris, and well done Jeremy Corbyn for dragging the Labour Party down with you, kicking and screaming. You have my support to be Labour leader for life, you worthless fuck pig. But on that note, I will end the video there guys. Before I go, I plan to do some gaming live streams and videos on my second channel that is linked in the video description and as a pinned comment to this video. If you are interested in joining the live streams or are a fan of gaming in general, you can support me over there also. I will be playing games with viewers and the live streams are a way for you guys to talk with me in near real time, so I hope to see you there. As always though, I do want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. Ramon! Ramon!